Marnen! Marnen! Welcome to the India Explained podcast, recorded in London and San Francisco. One take, unscripted, no rehearsal. Hey, Bhanti, greetings from San Francisco. Hope things are well with you. Uh, so for today's uh, episode, one of the episodes we're doing today, I wanted to talk about this story which you may have seen. Uh, quite a bizarre story, element of pathos to it as well. Uh, for compensation, this is the headline from the Times of India, for compensation, yes, elderly mm-hmm. sent to forests as tiger prey. And uh, basically what's happening is that uh, people in villages surrounding a, the Pilbhit Tiger Reserve, they uh, the local families are uh, leaving the older members of their um, you know their families there and uh, the once those members get uh, killed by tigers then uh, the family is uh, eligible for compensation i think this is a wild story rohit first of all um, i think the, i'm a massive fan of wildlife tourism uh, i try and save up and go as much as i can there's a lot of there's a lot of talk that um, you know wildlife tourism in, in in india is largely built on the back of hope hmm. Uh, as in, you know, because most people uh, take wildlife tourism to be uh, an elaborate trip to the zoo, which it actually isn't. Because, you know, if you want to see a guaranteed tiger, you have to um, go to a zoo. If you go to a safari or a wildlife tourism, there's no guarantee that you'll see a tiger. Hmm. So there are people who are tour operators in the wildlife circuit in order to um, kind of have the support of the local communities uh, which surround a particular reserve. Increasingly, ever since Tiger Project, Project Tiger had started in India in the 70s, uh, they have started, they, they have had to work closely with the communities in the yeah. adjoining a tiger reserve. Now, the strange one on this is obviously the tragic <clears throat> question of people, um, you know, being left to die in the middle of the forest and the tiger preying on them. And then that being turned into a compensation exercise. Mm. But I just think that, you know, this probably detracts from the huge progress wildlife conservation activists have made in India Mm. by co-working and co-opting people into um, tiger conservation. Mm -hmm. Because what's happening here is people are putting uh, vulnerable people in the middle of the forest to be eaten by tigers and getting compensation. I don't think it can happen without the forest officials knowing what is going on. Right. Uh, and I think that the article may or may not have uh, alluded to that because having been to a fair few tiger reserves in India, I know um, that that is the case. So while it's tragic, I I think, and it's in, a, in an odd sort of a way, it's darkly funny that you know, you're sending your elderly relative. Just imagine if this was constructed in a cityscape, your kind of grand aunt was being packed off to the zoo. And I, I'm very interested in what the farewell rituals are because I know in amongst the Inuit people, there's a ritual of getting into a boat and getting ready to die. Right. Uh, it would be interesting to see what you think of, you know, as people are leaving their homes for the last time into the forest. Yeah. What the ritual... <laughs> it, it's a dark one. It's yeah. a dark one. Right. There's, so there's a couple of points I'll make. First, just to clarify, uh, the villagers leave their elderly relatives in the forest and then once the relatives uh, you know the person in question is killed by a tiger they relocate the body to field to the fields because uh, if a person dies within the reserve then the family is not eligible for compensation since that is taken away. So that's the okay, natural okay, okay. natural sort of area of the tiger anyways right yeah, but right. <clears throat> so what they're doing is but if the the person dies in a field uh, then yeah. you know the assumption is, or the 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 idea is that the tiger is has strayed from the reserve, killed a local, and uh, because this is a government initiative in some way, the tigers overstepped its bounds, or the government was in some way responsible, and and uh, uh, the family has to be paid. So what they're doing is they put it's a very elaborate process. Then they're leaving the body, person gets killed, uh, body is relocated. So th- this is a very you know, in some ways tragic and, and again dark remark that someone makes, which is that family members, elders do it willingly. Uh, and how willingly, we don't know. They say that, uh, right. you know, because they know that they're not able to provide for their family. So they are very happy to, or they're, you know, they're willing to go ahead because this is one way in which the family members get money. Uh, but yeah, uh, you know, it. it uh, I agree with you that there has to be some degree of involvement. And I will just add, complementing what you said, that I hope that in some way this doesn't 
you know, turn into a kind of uh, vendetta or a backlash against the Tigers themselves. Correct. I think the other thing is, and again, going back uh, on Tiger tourism, it is crucial that when something like this happens, rather than these communities relying on compensation from insurance people, uh, the wildlife uh, protection park that is there uh, figures out a way. So this is basically some families going through a particular type of hardship who want to lump sum. Um, you know, I, I don't know the region well enough to say anything, but uh, something like a microfinance scheme or some kind of short-term loan scheme that is backed by or kind of uh, some kind of credit scheme that is backed by the local reserve would go a long way an excellent in point, helping yeah. people. To helping people, the one thing I, I started off uh, contributing this particular episode saying that Tiger uh, surf, uh, going on Tiger uh, resort and Tiger trips is essentially a function of hope. Because though I have been to many, I haven't actually seen a tiger hmm. in uh, in the first, and that hasn't stopped me. And I think I mentioned to you, this to you when we were in San Francisco together that when I went to a recent resort, and I won't tell you the name of the resort so that people don't feel that I'm biased about it. Right, right. I was in a jeep <clears throat> going into the forest, and the guards. Generally, in these jeeps, there are <clears throat> guards who are employed by the forest, hmm. uh, who are forest officials, who are from the local villages. So that's an employment thing that happens. Hmm. It happens in every resort. So the guy suddenly stopped the jeep and sir said to me, "Sir, sun, aap, uh, sun sakte ho? So I said, "What? Kya?" So he said, "Monkey ka alarm call." <laughs> so I said, so "I said, I said monkey ka alarm call. So kya?" Hai? So monkey can see tiger. <laughs> and, and now this was Rohit at a point where I couldn't even see the monkey. But you heard <laughs> the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't even hear the monkey. The guy said, "Sir, did you hear the monkey call uh, alarm call? Okay. A langur's alarm call or something?" And I said, "No, I didn't." But I said, what's the alarm call about? He said, the monkey has seen a tiger. <laughs> and I told him, boss, I haven't seen the monkey. You know, <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> so it, it, but, you know, the, I, I, I love yeah. uh, going uh, on wildlife tourism. And we'd, I'd be very interested to listening uh, and hearing about contributions that some of our listeners might want to make right. on wildlife tourism and their experiences and what they think about this, because it's a very interesting area for us. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you know that's an excellent point. I think you've you know you've uh, identified uh, something that I think has tremendous potential in India, uh, making the villagers uh, you know to use this language of microfinance and so on stakeholders in the whole process because it is something that could be tremendously tremendously profitable. Um, and uh, yeah, and I'm sorry that you know you weren't able to see a tiger. This reminds me of again a friend of mine, Rupesh Mulchandani, who. Uh, you know, he once saw Manoj Prabhakar and his point was that I saw Manoj Prabhakar and Manoj Prabhakar played with Kapil Dev and Kapil Dev won India the World Cup. So I was there at the World Cup. So <laughs> <laughs> sort of similar. Actually, but... Let's call up, on this one. Let's call out the publication because I think it's Times of India, right? Times right, of it's India. Times of India and... July 4th. Uh, and it's Pilbit Tiger Reserve. And the, is it a uh, who... Keshav Agarwal. It's a Times News Network updated. Yeah. Keshav, so yeah, we good. wanted to call out the news as well. And good, good story. Okay. So I think <coughs> oh, yeah, that pretty much okay. wraps it up. And yeah, maybe we'll do a piece on wildlife at some point of time. Okay. Take care, man. Bye. Absolutely. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.